Today is the penultimate night of the Deluxe Professional Boxing League Week 19. We are counting down to the final week. Remember that we also have uh, the President title coming up. And we also have a special uh, dinner night. We also have a special hours night of the Ghana Boxing Authority. Now, this is the moment all of us are waiting for. The ultimate bout of the evening. And this is heavyweight contest over six rounds. Officials for this bout. David Mills is the man in charge of the fight. Judge 1, Nathaniel Obain. Judge 2, David Amivy. And Williams is judge number 3. Now, introducing the boxer fighting out from the blue corner this evening is spotted in yellow and green trunks with red gloves to match and this is the man with a weight of 206 pounds presenting to you the man who was born right here at timber market the man who is also known to be called erasmus Enum. now switching over to the red corner it's one of the finest heavyweight boxers Ghana has penciled down as a world beater. This is the man with a weight of 207 pounds. And this is the man with the official record of two fight, two win. All the wins came by way of knockout. Presenting to you, the man, Philip Ayer. The man in charge of this fight is David. Mills. David Mills will walk Let's us through the last fight of uh, the five, evening. Total, and it's a heavyweight contest between Philip Tete in black break me, break. and Erasmus Anon Good luck. in green. If you take a look at the sizes, you will think it's even a mismatch. But let's see how this bout goes. It's round one. Philip Tete, I've seen in action before. Don't think he's been fighting regularly. But he's one of the few heavyweights who's shown some uh, consistency. And at this stage, it is Erasmus Anon in the yellow and green, putting the pressure on Tete. Tete tries to open up. Anon gets himself away from trouble. Tries to penetrate the guard there. Some good punches from uh, Anun. But of course, it's a strong, steady block uh, from Tete. Tries to close him on Anun now. A little bit of a strap removal. That will be sorted out pretty quickly by our centre referee. And the bout will go on in earnest. So Tete moving around quite well. There he is on your shot. Of course, the heavier of the two. And it's Erasmus who's keen on doing the uh, opening up. Again, heavyweights, not really the forte of uh, Ghana boxers. I like the good old days where we could boast of featherweight champions like Azuma Nelson, lightweight champions, welterweight champions like uh, Ike Quarte and Co, flyweight champions like Ebo Dankwa, bantamweight champions like King Kong Agbeko. But it should look interesting if Ghana can produce a very solid heavyweight champion. Well, uh, uh, Prince, I feel, uh, as you said earlier on, when you look at these uh, body types in the ring, you could feel maybe it could be a mismatch, you know? You see Philip Ayatete, look at how broad he is, heavy, uh, in terms of heavyweight contest, yes, he's ideal for that. When you look at Erasmus, uh, his size is somehow, some way, somehow a, deficient, a, a deficiency to him. And you know, um, it's, a, it's been a steady fight, from both fighters, Erasmus trying as much as possible, moving around and using the job establishment to probe his way through. But you know, Philip Ayer has not really started anything. 
he's just looking carefully at his opponent to see when he's going to yeah. pounce his punches. Seems he's rather warming himself into the exactly, bout. Exactly, exactly, Prince. That is what I'm trying to talk about here because he has not really pounced on his opponent. And I feel for Erasmus if Phillips starts to pounce on him because the, the kind of punch volume he's going to unleash on Erasmus is going to be hefty ones. Well, there you see him not giving Erasmus any room to move around or operate. And he takes one step, Teta takes two. Chasing him around the ring now, tiring out his opponent. End of the first round. Then they tell you, okay, then you know what to do. Then that is when we are going to see the kind of tactics and play Philip is going to bring on board. So I feel Erasmus needs to be careful because, I mean, <laughs> what Philip is doing is trying to bait him. He might think, Erasmus might feel that he's going in confidence, but Philip knows what he's doing. That is the kind of tactics he's bringing on board. So Erasmus needs to be careful because in round one, Philip didn't get dazed up on the kind of punches he was throwing at him. And this is what I'm talking about, Prince. You see? In round two, you see how Philip has started. My wild miss there from uh, Philip Tete. And you saw him prepping up that uh, punch. And he's got a very good block as well, Tete. Exactly. Not too scared to come forward as well. Erasmus goes in for the uh, clutch, and there you see Tete now chasing him up and down the ring. Trying to cut the ring to size and prevent Erasmus from uh, further movement. Spot on there from you, Prince. You know, in the round one, that's what Philip did. He tried as much as possible, reading his opponent, cutting the ring according to his size, cutting it well so that he would know in the next round he knows how he's going to cut the rings sizes to his his accordance and that's what he has done so you could see that erasmus is moving but philip is stalking him and he knows when to stalk him but the fight is getting interesting here erasmus yeah. too is not really falling for it exactly. he's also going for it exactly that's getting interesting here he says he's okay he's good to go he's showing that he can also take some hefty punches from the hefty tete just avoids most of the punches by Erasmus. Erasmus now goes to the body. Quick shot to the head. Easily blocked by Tete. He lands a few punches of his own. He misses a wild one. And it's now the turn of Tete to go in for the clinch. You know, Prince, Philip is really enjoying himself. He likes what Erasmus is doing. And you know, that is where I want to play on the safety side of Erasmus. In as much as he's swinging wild, he needs to be careful. A counter punch from Philip I'm sure Erasmus is going to go down because when you look at that arms of Philip and you compare to Erasmus' own, man, that arm has a lot of hefty and volume punches in it. There the two boxers go again. Combination of uh, jabs from uh, Erasmus, of course not getting the needed effect. Tete will come forward once again. Good block by Tete. Tete comes forward and he makes himself large. And he turns into a practice target for Erasmus. He's also not landing the quality punches that should rock Tete at this time. Tete goes to the head. Goes to the head again. Jabs seem to be picking up the points for Tete. Flips Erasmus once again, goes to the body, goes to the head now. Combination of punches from the two. In, in as much as trying to probe with the jabs, and that is what has been key for Erasmus. Uh, I think Philip needs to step up his game here because we know what Philip can do. It is Erasmus that I feel I've not really seen him, but with Philip, I know what he can do. One or two punches, and if it, if it lands clean, it's going to really rock. Erasmus, but let's see how this runs go. Round three. Erasmus in green and yellow trunks. Philip Tete in black. Wild miss by Erasmus. Another one and yet another one. Tete walks out of trouble, but Erasmus will keep coming forward. 
misses with a wild uppercut. Teta clips him on the head. And it looks like Erasmus has overcome the early scare that Tete came into the ring and he's now throwing everything at Tete. Caution by the uh, center referee. Cautions uh, Tete the rabbit punch to the back of the head. And there he goes forward once again. Clips uh, Erasmus to the head twice. And a third one. Eventual clip goes in. And then they are good to continue. Good punches there from Erasmus, digging to the body and going upstairs. That's good, good move from Erasmus. But there's a turn from Philip, pouncing his opponent in the corner there. Philip now has him cornered. And it's a give and take affair. Erasmus stands tall. The crowd love his resilience. Exactly. Prince right here, you know, they know that in times of size difference, Erasmus is the deficiency here. But looking at the point that Erasmus has stand toe to toe with Philip at this round is incredible to watch. Erasmus really have big heart here, but Philip is yet to show the kind of lightning that we are looking for. Because when you look at the size difference, everything tells you that Philip, if he throws one or two, three punches that it lands, it's really gonna kill Erasmus, but hey, don't take it from Erasmus. Erasmus is also showing that size difference can matter. But hey, I also have the technicalities and know how about that I can also deal with the big man in front of me. Erasmus still giving as he takes, and he's not scared to do that. Tries to clip Tete, Tete goes down, walks out of trouble, but then works on the face. Erasmus will go down. Complaining of the shoulder. Up he gets on his feet. See, Prince, this is what I was talking about. That if Phelan steps up his game and he gives one, two, three combination and it lands cleanly, Erasmus is going to go down. And that's what we've seen. And then try to open up again. Second arm. Here we go. Four. It's round four. Let's see if Erasmus can make it. Erasmus is still on the bench. He says he can't make it. The shoulder mm. is still the bane of contention. Mm. And that's it. That's it. He's played safe. Exactly. Exactly. It's a decent call. He complained about the shoulder when he went down. He complained when the bell went for the end of the round and as you can see he was still on the stool when the bell went for the commencement of the next round but he put up a spirited performance exactly prince i wouldn't agree with you you know you know when you look at what he has done he has just showed big hearts but i mean wonderful. look at it week 19 of the deluxe professional boxing league our foreign dignitaries who are here alhaji salim and his team we want to thank you very much for bringing our foreign dignitaries here. We thank all our viewers, wherever you are. Now, the verdict that we have, ladies and gentlemen, the winner by a technical knockout in round number four. Let's welcome the boxer, Philip Aitata. On behalf of the security on behalf of our medical personnel, on behalf of the ring officials, on behalf of our commentators, on behalf of all my makers who are here, the coaches, the boxers, and everybody, thank you so much for being part of the show. My name is Mohammed Amit Lamte. We'll be with you on Monday, live on Max TV, from 11 to 12 to give you the details of tonight. Once again, stay blessed, but then be good. And bye for now.